Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag, but kind of like my version of it. I've gotten rid of some questions and have tweaked it a bit because I've done the tag several times on my channel since I started it in 2018. So this is probably like the third or fourth time I've done it and it gets old, but I really do like watching these videos. I like watching other people do the tag. And so yeah, I've changed some questions around. I think it was made like 2014 2015 so it's time for us to have a new tag um, but really I just want to update my reading really quick because I've only posted a couple videos this year I'm sorry but I did promise that I was going to update my reading so here I am keeping that promise let's go ahead and get into it before I start, if you want to keep up with me and my reading, then follow me elsewhere. I'm a little more active on some other platforms than YouTube lately, um, so I'll leave them on the screen here. It is storybook everywhere, I'm pretty sure, spelled just like my channel name, so. Of course, the first question is the best book you've read so far this year in 2022. And that for me is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I actually just finished this not that long ago, probably a couple weeks ago, and it's by far my favorite book so far this year. I'm really excited to continue within the series. I'm reading the second book right now. And to the several, several people that told me I was gonna like this book, you were right. <laughs> I knew I would like it as well. It was one of those things where I didn't want to pick it up because I knew I was going to like it, if you know what I mean. It was like I was kind of saving it, but then I thought about it and I was like, screw it. I don't want to save this for the fall and then just not read it this fall again. So I read it during the summer and I really, really enjoyed it. This is about our main character, Amelia, who is a witch. She comes from a long line of witches in Sicily, Italy. So this is based in Italy. It is a Italy inspired fantasy that kind of has its own world as well on top of Sicily, but it is called The Kingdom of the Wicked because it is a play on the seven deadly sins. We basically are introduced to the idea of seven deadly princes of hell. You already know that's my type of book. <laughs> so I will say the reason I probably really like this was because all the fantasies I've read this year, I don't think I've liked so far. There's only been a couple, but this has really gotten me back in the mood for fantasy, especially like dark witchy fantasy. There's some paranormal romance, mystery, intrigue, family dynamics, fantasy, folklore, that sort of thing. But obviously the dark fantasy and paranormal romance is my cup of tea. I have a feeling I'm going to like the second book even more because it delves into the world more and it also goes from young adult to new adult. So this first book is young adult, you know, basic tension and then the second book gets a little steamier. So I've heard. So yeah, I've been reading this with one of my friends and it's been really good to buddy read a book that gets me, you know, really into reading as well. I'm just really excited to get back into fantasy a little more. I'm definitely not in the headspace for it all the time, but this is a good one for sure. I also have to mention Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. This was definitely my favorite book before I read Kingdom of the Wicked and this is a close second. There's a squirrel staring at me. Get on with your life. I was recommended this because my favorite book last year was The Midnight Library, which you know I love so much. This is definitely a good recommendation if you do like that book. It's not the perfect recommendation. It's just a good recommendation. It's not gonna be exactly like the Midnight Library. I feel like that book deals more with like mental health aspects, a lot of depression, anxiety, um, a lot of philosophical type of content, which I really love. And so this is a more fun, cute, quick type a book instead but it deals with those same themes basically una lives her life out of order so every year on her birthday jumps to a different year of her life so one year she'll be 50 then she'll go back to being 19 then she'll go be 70 and then 20 and it's really hard for her to live her life that way obviously because she never knows what's going on or what has happened in her life to to get her to where she is. And there's just a lot of different aspects about it surrounding that. So it kind of is a book that like spirals within itself. And it's definitely a book you'll read really fast because you just want to like get to the next year and see what happens type of thing. And I really love the characters in this book as well. Next is best sequel you've read so far this year. So I've only read one sequel actually. I take that back. I've read two sequels. One we're gonna talk about here in a bit. The only other sequel I read, I gave four out of five stars, so obviously that's gonna be my favorite sequel I've read this year. And that is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. So I read both of these books in this duology this year. I read them back to 
back actually because Hook, Line, and Sinker came out while I was reading the first book. Really, really love the first book. I gave that five stars, which is It Happened One Summer. And then this book I gave four stars. Still really enjoyed this book. It was just, it was far different. This is definitely a slow burn. So if you don't like slow burn, then don't read this book. But the first book is not a slow burn. It's kind of insta low. So it's just very, it's very opposite. They're two completely different romances. Um, and I think I expected it to be more insta levy, even though I don't like insta love. I usually prefer slow burn, but yeah, I really like the main character. She's into movies and music and um, entertainment type stuff like myself. And then I actually really love the love interest as well. He kind of had to grow on me. Yeah, it was kind of just like your average romance read. I feel like I always dive into romance books, even though you don't really need to, because it's just a romance book. Like you always deal with the same tropes, the same types of characters. It always ends the same way they end up together. <laughs> So what I'm trying to say is I'm not going to deep dive into romances anymore, but this is a really good one if you haven't picked it up. So far, Tessa Bailey is definitely an author I'm going to look more into in the future. Favorite reread. So I haven't reread <laughs> anything yet this year, but I am planning to here soon. And that's going to be Miss Evelyn Hugo, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo um, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't really need to explain this book. I feel like it was so popular on YouTube and then TikTok found it and so popular on TikTok now. I convinced my friend to read it. She actually read this copy and she just died while reading this. And it made me really excited for it and made me want to reread it. I've been planning to reread it this year anyways. So I don't know if it will be super soon, but I definitely have to. I'm thinking about going the audiobook route actually because I've heard the audiobook is really good and I've only read it physically, so I might end up doing that. But if you don't know what this is, you're probably not on TikTok. It is a fictional take on Marilyn Monroe, except in this scenario, she's Latina, Hispanic, and when she comes to fame, they kind of whitewash her in a way. And then she's known for having several husbands. She just marries people instantly back to back. And so over her life, she's been a very secret, type of celebrity, she's never done interviews, that sort of thing. And when she gets older, she chooses this random girl, our main character, I guess, to interview her life and to publish it into a book after she dies. And so we're trying to figure out why she's chosen this girl, but we also are diving into her story and wondering like, why seven husbands and who is the love of her life out of these seven husbands. Really, really good. I talk about this book, or I used to talk about this book on my channel all the freaking time. It's been a while since I've read it, obviously. I think I read it in like, 2018, so I'm really excited to reread it. Genre you've been loving or reading the most? Definitely, I'm gonna say fantasy and sci-fi. I always kind of have to take a break with fantasy and then I always like end up finding my way back. I can't like deep dive and read like five fantasy books after one another. Um, I have to have a break since I do read every genre. I do like to throw genres around here and there and kind of get a taste of everything. I am a person of variety. Okay, I like variety, but it's definitely been my cup of tea here recently and I plan to read more this year, so I'm super excited about that. I always read fantasy in the winter because you're, you have to be inside, so you might as well like cozy up with a really good big long book and fantasy books usually are. I've always loved sci-fi as like movies and TV shows and I've recently discovered that I like them as books as well, so I wanna give more a chance. I also really love, <laughs> I guess they're called That Girl. <laughs> books nowadays. Um, I've always read those types of books, so I guess I've always been that girl. I don't understand the concept, but I really, really love books with philosophical type of aspects, whether they are fiction or nonfiction. Right now I'm reading a nonfiction type of like philosophical book. Um, I don't ever know how to explain them in another way either. I just love philosophy. I love life and learning about life and different viewpoints and that sort of thing. Um, and thinking about it in different terms, different themes surrounding life. So yeah. <laughs> Most anticipated release for this year, definitely Kingdom of the Feared. Hello, I'm reading the second book right now. I have it right here. I literally just started it, so I'm not very far. I have a feeling it's going to be very different from the first book, very, very, very different. But so far I'm liking it. I'm, I'm hoping it's gonna give me like the same vibes of the first book in some way so that I, I still get those types of vibes. Yeah, liking it so far. And then Kingdom of the Feared comes out at the end of September. So definitely excited for that. I have a feeling once I finish this book, I'm gonna be super excited for it. But I'm thinking, which don't spoil it for me if you've already read the series, but I'm thinking the first book is set in Italy. The second book is set somewhere else. It's a spoiler, so I can't say. So I feel like the third book is going to be either just set in Italy or it's going to be 
both of them kind of at the same time, like back and forth. And I think that'll be really interesting, but I can't say too much because obviously this is a third book in the series. And then obviously the second book in the, I don't even know if the series has a name, but the first book, Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, I almost said Stephanie Meyer. I just met her actually. <laughs> I just met Stephanie. So I will pop some pictures up here. I, I'm sure by now I've probably posted them to Instagram and TikTok and whatnot, but she was super, super sweet. It's my first time meeting an author in person and I had her sign all my Caraval books. Like I had a lot of books. So thank you to her for doing that and for talking to me for so long because I just literally gushed about Caraval the entire time. I even gave her a book recommendation and she took it, she wrote it down. But anyways, the second book comes out this year as most of you know, if you watch that vlog, I did not give a great review of the first book. Um, it just doesn't feel like the Caraball world for me. So I'm hoping the second book, we learn a lot about my favorite character, Jax. Like a lot, I hope the entire book's about him. We uncover so much mystery and we just dive deeper into this world and this book feels like the Caraball world. That's what I'm hoping for. But yeah, I think at this point, Kingdom of the Feared is actually more anticipated for me than that book. But this book comes out beginning of September and then Kingdom of the Fear comes out end of September, so. Biggest disappointment, 100%, 1000%. <laughs> My biggest disappointment this year is When Night Breaks. I can never remember the name of this book and it took me so long to read it because it's very big and it was not a great experience. It was a very gruesome, grueling, is that a word? Experience. I absolutely love the first book, Where Dreams Ascend. I think I gave it a four out of five, but it's, it is it is one of my favorite fantasy books that deals with magic. This is not the same, it's the complete opposite. And if you read the author's note at the end, she does talk about how she wrote this during COVID and it was a very like low time in her life, very sad time in her life. And it, it shows in this book, just a very dark, almost depressing book. Whereas the first one is very fun and light and magical. <sighs> was not what I expected nor what I wanted. I paid full price for this book as well. And the books are so beautiful. Like I'm probably gonna keep this book just cause it's so beautiful. Very high expectations for this just cause the first book was so good. And this 100% was my biggest disappointment of the year. Definitely the worst book I've read this year. Um, it's one of the lowest ratings I've ever given a book. But I do love the first book. I do want people to read the first book. Just don't continue with the series, honestly. Cause it's just, not worth it at all. You will not have a satisfied feeling while reading this or at the very end of the series. So it kind of tainted the series for me. Also The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I had high expectations for this book because it's one of the most known like romance books like ever really, like everyone talks about it. I did not like this book at all. I did not like the characters. I didn't like the plot, the story, the theme, the, the dialogue, the like literally nothing about this book I liked. I realized I really don't like the typical LA girl or influencer social media star goes to the wilderness. <laughs> I don't like that trope and I don't know why it's used so often. I just can't, I, I could not stand this main character. She complained so much and then once she, she kind of like dives into this area, expect things to get better, but I just always couldn't stand her um, and I could not stand the relationship either. I did like the love interest, but they treated each other like shit. Like not just a hate to love, like a like a cruel hate to love and I was not about that. I couldn't really believe the insta love because the hate to love was so bad. So really nothing good to say about this one. Next is biggest surprise. So I have on here Una out of order of course because I had no idea about this book until I got recommended it because of Loving the Midnight Library, like had no idea about it. It's actually a Good Morning America book club pick. And so I kind of want to read a couple more from their book club because I love this so much. But yeah, obviously I knew nothing about this book and then I really, really liked it. So that was a good surprise. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows by Ava Lavender was a great surprise as well. I've always known this as magical realism and I have learned the past couple years that I love magical realism, especially when it's more like lighthearted and, and fluffy, small town kind of feel. And this was definitely it, but you are following multiple generations of French immigrants. They come from France to America. And so you get to follow like the entire family until you get to Ava and her situation. She was born with wings, um, but no one knows why. And there's 
a lot of different factors within that, how people react to her and kind of what happens because of her situation. Um, I will say that once you get to Ava's story, I would have given that part like two or three stars, but up until that point when you learn about all of the generations of people that have these weird magical realism happenings to them. Um, it, it was just so cool and my last name is French as well so I have French ancestors and it was just really cool to be like in a magical realism book that was set in France but also set in America and just such whimsical lyrical writing. This was a great surprise to me because it showed me a different side of magical realism I haven't seen yet. And then I also have It Ends With Us on this list by Colleen Hoover. I will link that video down below where I read that book. I read a couple romances or a few romances in that vlog actually. If you're a big Colleen Hoover fan and want to see my reaction to this, it was a big surprise because I didn't know anything going into this book. I didn't really know much about Colleen Hoover books in general. And then at one point I felt really nauseous, very sick because I didn't, I didn't understand the intense like traumatic aspects of these books. Um, so that was definitely a surprise because I just didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Favorite new author, definitely Carrie Maniscalco once again, um, and also Tessa Bailey. So Carrie Maniscalco wrote the Kingdom of the Wicked series. Definitely love her writing. Definitely love, she, she writes all the themes that I love, like I said earlier. And then obviously Tessa Bailey is a new favorite romance author, so I'm definitely gonna give more of her stuff a try. I feel like she has the perfect ratio for story slash characters slash plot and smut. So sometimes there's too much smut for me and sometimes if there's not like any or not enough, just like a hint of it, I kind of want more. So I feel like she's like at a really good place with the ratio because the very first book was like 70% smut and then the second book was like 20 or 30. So like, I feel like she knows based on that type of book and the characters and the story and all that, how much to put into it. So I hope that makes sense. If you're a romance reader, you probably get what I'm saying, but sometimes authors have trouble with the ratio of smut to non-smut in romance books. This was originally New Fictional Crush by Changes to New Favorite Character because I don't know, can we just like make it more general? <laughs> Why does it have to be a fictional crush? So I put Wrath question mark because I feel like I'm going to like Wrath more after reading the second book. I did like him. He's definitely probably my new favorite fictional crush, I guess, but He's not perfect. I'm not like really attached to him, only just a little attached, if you know what I'm saying. So I feel like the second book, I'm probably gonna like him more. So ask me at the end of the year. <laughs> books that made you cry and books that made you happy. So It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover definitely made me cry. Holy crap, I filmed like a second of it of me just absolutely bawling at the end of that book. Uh, <laughs> and then Ava Lavender, I think I cried just a little bit towards the end because it's just, really sad. And then books that made you happy, obviously Una Out of Order and Kingdom of the Wicked were my favorite books. So they just made me really happy after I finished them. Books to read by the end of the year. So I definitely put this on there because at the time I hadn't started it yet. Obviously I've started it, so I'm probably going to finish it by the end of the year, but definitely this book and the third book that's going to come out. And then I also put down Normal People by Sally Rooney. I've really wanted to try out some Sally Rooney books because I just feel like her books have been all the talk and it seems like they're more like philosophical books that I like so I just want to give her a chance and if they are that type of book then I'll probably read all her books to be honest but I just got Normal People for myself and Kingdom of the Curse for my birthday which I'll be doing a birthday book haul next hopefully so I think the actual question is most anticipated reads for the rest of the year but I've obviously butchered this tag and that is it for me thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you haven't already if you like it and I will see you in my next one bye